In March 1999, a helicopter landed at Silverwater Prison in Sydney to pick up convicted bank robber John Kelly. But the helicopter wasn't there to transfer John to another prison. It was his escape plan. John flew out of Silverwater Prison that day. He would evade capture for several weeks. But to truly understand John's story, you must look back at his past and all of the events that led up to one of the most daring prison escapes ever. John Killick's life was filled with unfortunate events from the very beginning. His father was an alcoholic who would lash out and abuse both John and his mother in their Balmain home. Her death when he was 17 and the foreclosure of the family home were pivotal events in John's life. He became hardened to the rest of the world and left home. It marks the beginning of John's crimes. He started with several petty thefts to survive, which would fund his gambling efforts. When he lost money through more gambling, he carried out further thefts. John's petty theft eventually escalated to where he thought the real money was, bank robbing. He carried out his first major heist when he was 24, stealing $40,000 from the Commonwealth Bank in Canley Heights. John did have a gun to aid in his robberies, but only fined warning shots. These robberies of John's led to prison time all over Australia. Throughout his time behind bars, he encountered other notable crime figures such as Nettie Smith and Stephen Bradley, the man responsible for killing 8-year-old Graham Thorne. John was also in Pentridge Prison the day that Ronald Dry became the last person ever executed in Australia. John's crimes didn't stop him from meeting women who cared about him. John met his first wife Gloria at a chess tournament in 1973. He was honest with her about his past crimes and did keep out of trouble for a while, but things didn't last between them. Gloria divorced John after he lost the business they bought together to gambling bookkeepers. John pulled off multiple escapes from custody throughout his criminal life. His first attempt saw him flee captors while being escorted to Bathurst Courthouse, only to be caught after hiding in a chicken pen. And in 1968, he attempted a breakout at Pemridge Prison, but was soon recaptured. He also ended his stay at Bogger Road Prison early in 1983, with the aid of one of his lovers. But it wouldn't be the last time that John escaped with the help of a woman who had fallen for him, and the next time would be even more spectacular. After making his way to Canberra in the 1990s, John began a relationship with a librarian named Lucy. She found out all about his past and would turn out to be incredibly supportive. In January 1999, John was sent to Sydney Silverwater Prison after robbing the National Australia Bank in Barrel. He staged the robbery because, as he may have guessed, he had to pay off the gambling debt. Only weeks into his stay at Silverwater, John decided he was going to escape prison once more. He became acquainted with a con man who had also flown helicopters, and they discussed what someone would need to know to successfully hijack one. After noticing how the prison guards took little notice of helicopters flying overhead, John was convinced. This time, his escape wouldn't be on foot, but in the air. He would need Lucy's help though. To prepare for the daring plan, Lucy watched the movie Breakout, which features a woman breaking her husband out of jail with a helicopter. And as it would turn out, life would imitate art. On the 25th of March 1999, Lucy boarded pilot Tim Joyce's Bell 47 light helicopter for a joy flight over Sydney Olympic Park. The upcoming Olympic Games meant more people than normal were interested in seeing the area from the air. The pilot thought it was strange that Lucy hadn't brought a camera with her, but he soon found out why. Lucy was only interested in seeing Silverwater Prison. When the pilot refused to fly any lower, Lucy pulled out her gun. The pilot tried to send out a distress call with the helicopter's transponder, but Lucy was prepared. She batted his arm away from the device 
with her pistol. Lucy then produced an unloaded submachine gun from her bag and ordered the pilot to land in the exercise yard of Silverwater Prison, where John would be waiting. They sat down on the ground. With her gun pointed at the pilot, John saw his chance and climbed into the helicopter with Lucy. The cheers of the other prisoners filled the courtyard as he made his ascent. Prison officers fired three shots at the escaping helicopter, hitting it twice, but the gunfire wasn't enough to slow the hijackers down. The pilots flew them out of the prison courtyard. The hijacking was a success. There was just one problem. Lucy had forgotten her car keys for the next stage of their journey. Realising the helicopter was moving very slowly, John ordered the pilot to land in Parkland near Macquarie University. After they landed, Lucy argued with John that they should take the pilot hostage. The pair settled for tying the pilot to a nearby tree. John and Lucy knew the police would be on their trail. The lovers commandeered a car, drove to North Sydney to catch a train and considered fleeing overseas to avoid the law. After seeing their faces in newspapers though, it became clear to them that they wouldn't be leaving the country. John and Lucy instead decided to stay on the move. While traversing the country, John dyed his hair to avoid being identified, with Lucy having no such disguise. Despite their best efforts, they were eventually caught. Using the names Mr and Mrs Brown, John and Lucy stayed at the Bass Hill Tourist Park in New South Wales. The park's manager recognised Lucy when they checked in and he contacted the authorities. Police surrounded John and Lucy's cabin the next morning and ordered the pair to give themselves up over loudspeakers. In the end, they were captured 45 days after the prison break. John was given a 23-year sentence, while Lucy received 10. The two lovers did keep in touch through letters for several years, but their love didn't last. Lucy ended their relationship after she became a born-again Christian and was released from prison. She has since changed her name and avoided the public spotlight. John's helicopter escapades would prove to be his final prison escape and his life went on a new trajectory. After being released from prison in 2015, John has written multiple books about his life, from his upbringing to all of his criminal escapades. In any interview you read or watch with him, it's clear that John regrets how his past crimes have affected people. While he made a point never to shoot to kill during his many robberies, John is sorry for the trauma they inflicted on those unlucky enough to be present during them. John has even made amends with the pilot whose helicopter was hijacked during his most famous prison escape. And John's time in prison did rehabilitate him in many ways. Today, John champions education for prisoners as a way for them to realise the harm they have done to victims of their crimes and to reduce the likelihood of reoffending. Thank you for watching this video everybody, I really do appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, then you may also like my video about Ronald Ryan, the last man ever executed in Australia. Take care everybody.